Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 7th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We got Washington State, Oregon here. This has been our ridge of high pressure here. It, the axis is now starting to slide off to the east, and we also have this subtle feature here, this upper level low embedded in that upper level ridge, and you can see it moving across Oregon as we speak. And this has brought some lightning up across the region, even in each portions of the Willamette Valley out towards the coastal range. We'll take a look at those details. We'll take a look at what is to come and if you notice out there we are quite smoky across the region we'll take a look at when that smoke might be starting to kick out of our area we'll also take a look at the extended forecast we have some troughing on the way we have a system coming as we go through next week so lots to talk about here today let's dive into things a little bit closer and this is this morning you can see still some lightning strikes looks like about or near mount rate uh, Mount Hood there. Mount Rainier is a little bit further north. You can see Washington, Oregon borders right there. Some east slopes of the Cascades and off into eastern Oregon. It's been some light in this morning also. So let's back up uh, through the overnight hours and you can see as we went through yesterday, you can see that thunderstorm activity really just develop hundreds of lightning strikes up across the Oregon Cascades, moved across some of the Willamette Valley and out towards the coastal range for a bit. And we got a little bit of a wane in some of the activity overnight. And as we go back in towards this morning, we're still kicking off some of those lightning strikes. So you can see some of this is likely to move up towards the Cascades and some of these could be of the isolated dry variety which means they are not producing enough precipitation to help extinguish any fires that they may create. And of course you can see on the visible satellite imagery all the smoke that is present in the atmosphere already. So hopefully it's not kicking off any more fires but we shall see. Taking a look at uh, Pendleton uh, National Weather Service, Oregon, Eastern Oregon. This was updated just at 5 a.m. and we have some critically unstable conditions. Red flag warnings are in effect, so heads up. Let's not help Mother Nature out and start any more fires. Thunderstorm chances, you can see there is the chance across the Cascades today, not that great of a chance. And then some of the Blue Mountains in the Southeast Washington as well. Possible new ignitions, little rain and some gusty winds. And this is the isolated dry thunderstorm potential for today on and through tomorrow morning does include some of Washington, Oregon Cascades, Eastern Oregon, and then for tomorrow as well, Sunday morning on and through Monday, you can see it continuing for portions of the Pacific Northwest. And you can see the thunderstorm convective outlook does correlate with that as well. There's day one and day two. And then day three, the system will be out of our region and we'll be looking off to the north and the west to take a look at our next system moving into the area. So looking at Seattle yesterday, 88 degrees. That is two degrees off the record high yesterday. And again, we did set a record high for September 5th of 90 degrees. The old record for yesterday was 90 as well. No threat to get to 94 today, which was set back in 1981. No precipitation yet, but potentially a little bit coming here as we go through next week. Now, uh, on September 5th, several places in uh, Oregon did set records. Astoria and Portland, for example, here you can see 102 degrees on September 5th for Oregon, 89 for Astoria. Just going through this quickly, uh, yesterday we did set records in Euphrata. We did set one in OMAC and Spokane, Washington. We tied one there in 1944. And this is for some of Eastern Oregon. Uh, this is for yesterday, Dallasport, Yakima, Redmond, Ellensburg, so yeah, very hot out there. And that will continue for a couple more days, especially east of the mountains. Uh, maybe not record highs, but we'll take a look at those in a moment. Now, looking at the high resolution rapid refresh, this is lightning flash density potential. As we go through the day today, you can see this activity that is still occurring as we go. But you notice if I back up, we're about 14Z or so right now, and it's not really picking up a lot of the activity across some of the higher terrain of the Cascades as we go. So this might be underperforming a bit. But we scroll on in here, and we go on into Sunday morning, and again, you can see some of this thunderstorm activity will be with us as we go through Sunday night and finally kicking off to the east after that point. So the next story is, of course, the very dense smoke. Those, you know, a lot of clouds are not present here across western Washington, but a lot of smoke is. The cloud band is a little bit further south across much of Oregon and southern Washington. So when you wake up and you see the dark skies, that is because we have so much smoke aloft in the atmosphere. And I also want to show this. After I, after I play this, I'm going to show the surface smoke. But you can see this nasty smoke just hanging with us as we go through tonight and on into tomorrow morning. We have some fires that we'll look at here in a moment producing a lot of smoke across Oregon. But by the time we get towards Monday morning, Sunday night, Monday morning, we really start to lessen the effects of the smoke. As we start the glorious onshore push, Mother Nature's air conditioning, it's going to start to shunt that off to the east. Of course, it's going to take longer to mix the smoke out and push it off to the east or places east of the mountains. And of course, if you're in the vicinity of some of these fires here in Oregon, you're going to be dealing with that for a 
much longer period until we can get some systems to drop some much needed rainfall. So if we look at the natural bed of models, I just want to run through this really quickly. As we go through the morning today, you can see some of these showers moving up across the Cascades here. So this is that thunderstorm threat. And again, not much precipitation shown. So some of these could have lightning strikes associated with them. And then we scroll on into Sunday and on into Sunday, later morning hours shown here. Now, I want to show you the Rail Ridge fire looks like it is the one that's producing the, the lion's share of the smoke across Oregon. Look at this, 24,424 acres it grew yesterday. So yes, definitely producing a whole bunch of smoke. And that is the main culprit for much of the region. And since we've been dealing with some of this offshore flow with the thermal trough up over the area, we've been introducing that smoke off into portions of Western Washington, Western Oregon, up into British Columbia. So this is a wider look at things here. We're looking at things at 5,000 feet. This is 850 millibar temperature. And you can really see this ridge axis that kind of highlights what our heat wave was doing all the way up into Canada. And of course, it's now moved off to the east a bit here. But you can see as we scroll off in towards Monday morning here, the ridge axis starting to move off to the east. And then we start to introduce some of this cooler weather as we go on into the mid portion of the week. And that's going to be our initial system here. Not a big precipitation maker, but it's definitely going to cool us down. As you can see, the temperatures are off, dro dropping dramatically here as we go on in towards the end of next week. Then perhaps another system trying to drop down. And something the model has been showing off in the very extended forecast is some deeper troughing out over the Gulf of Alaska. That's something you're going to see in the model runs from time to time. I do see people talking about that, but you take that with a grain of salt going through September. It is a transition month and there will be there will be troughs, but you got to wait till we get to a closer period of time before we can start to worry about those systems. But that's always a good sign. The mid-latitude cyclone machine starts to get going here as we go through the mid and later portion of September, hopefully anyway. Now, taking a look at uh, the European 500 millibar heights, and you can see we've been dealing with this ridge. And in the meantime, we're going to start this little short wave moving through as we go through Sunday night into Monday morning, kicking that onshore flow on. Next system rolls down in here into the west coast of North America, and that's the one that'll bring some precipitation with it potentially across the region as well. And then we look off a little bit off into the future. You can see maybe some troughing continuing as we go through mid-September, and then maybe even a little bit of a ridge trying to build here at times as we go through the extended forest gas but no promises there we'll just wait and see and play that out day by day now if we look at precipitation amounts i want to scroll ahead here because this is a 24 hour running total you can see some of that precipitation with some of the thunderstorm activity but then the system gets here as we go through tuesday night on in through wednesday and you can see it's not a lot of precipitation for places across bc and washington but better amounts across some of western oregon here and you know we'll take whatever we can get at this time of year hopefully we can help out with some of the fire activity out here and then we scroll through our 144 and that system starts to push off to the east. Now, National Blend of Models, this is for today. You can see, you know, the smoke is going to be wreaking havoc with some of these temperatures. You may not get into the mid 80s for Seattle, for example, but it still should be a fairly warm day. It's showing Portland getting up towards 90, but as you saw, there's a lot of smoke around across eastern Washington as well. And then we go on through Sunday, a bit of a cool down. You'll start to feel it a little bit, starting to come through. Then Monday, even further, Tuesday, Wednesday, check that out as that system rolls down across Pacific Northwest. Everybody gets a cool down the mother nature pacific ocean air conditioning is going to be ripping across the pacific northwest by the time we get towards midweek there's thursday friday saturdays and seasonable temperatures here as we go on in towards next weekend and yeah we'll continue to break those down but you can see we're definitely going to have a big drop off from the heat wave we've been experiencing here's the six to ten day you can kind of see as we go through mid-september kind of a blow average signal here for the west coast a bit of an above average for some interior locations, but as we go through the 8 to 14 days, again, something similar, below average for the West Coast, a little bit of a broad brush for above average here for the Pacific Northwest. This was also issued yesterday, a three to four week temperature outlook. This goes through October 4th, equal chances for much of the West Coast here, but look at that nice signal showing up there as we go September 21st through October 4th. They may be picking up on some of that troughing that's been showing up in some of the model runs at the very end, so we'll be watching that as well. But anyway, yeah, Yep, got to get out there and run some errands today and um, we did some dust double chasing there yesterday <laughs> had a pretty exciting day again <laughs> yesterday probably the last dust double chase of the year so i had to get my last fix in before the entire machine gets shut down for the next six months or so and then i can start back up again maybe next spring or summer but anyway hope you guys are enjoying the channel click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then